Hey everyone, welcome to episode 11 of The Photo Show. My name is Brian Matias, and today is Monday, May 23rd. Um, I just wanted to give a special little shout out to my wonderful, lovely sister Greta. Today's her birthday, so happy birthday, Geet. I uh, hope you see this. So, I hope everyone had a great weekend. Uh, <laughs> I've been, I'm very excited about uh something that a purchase of mine that happened late yesterday so just at the tail end of the weekend but to kind of give you a little bit more context um back in episode four of the photo show uh, i talked about uh, or it featured matthew callahan who is a syracuse grad which is my alma mater as well as a member of the u.s marines and just is this phenomenal photographer with his project here called galactic warfighters and um, so what he does is he leans on his experience in the military as well as uh, photos that others have taken in the military. And he uses these Star Wars figures that are very, very uh, posable and uh, can articulate in a bunch of different ways. Like you can articulate the hands and the shoulders and everything. And uh, I became obsessed with this, like hardcore obsessed. This was like a couple of weeks ago and it's been on my mind. I've been doing research on all these different toys. I grew up in, uh, so I was born in 1978, and I grew up in the 80s watching Transformers. That was like my jam. And I'm sure a lot of you can relate. So I was thinking, man, it would be so cool to kind of riff off of this series, um, but use Transformers. And one thing led to another. I was looking at these uh, toys that are called Transformers Masterpiece Collection. Uh, I think by a company called Takara or something like that, a Japanese company, and they make these really articulate um, or articulating uh, figures of Transformers. And then one thing, again, led to another, and I learned about Hot Toys. So let's, uh, <laughs> uh, let's, uh, let's just jump to the second camera here. And I bought these two uh, products. Uh, I guess you call them products. So here is Iron Man. And Iron Man, this is from Iron Man 3. This is the Silver Centurion model. And he is totally, art, you can articulate him in every way. Here's what's so cool. If you remove the back plate, there's a tiny little switch. And watch what happens. Boom! And then you can remove his head plate too. Um, so his little arc react, oops, back here. There's the thing. So you can uh, remove the arc react, or you can turn on the arc reactor and also you can kind of illuminate his eyes. And then you can also illuminate the repulsor cannons in his arms. There are little switches right here. And then, <laughs> it's ridiculous. Like, you've got these and then you've also got where, I've got all the pieces back here. Here, so check this out. So you've got this um, little replacement head, but watch this. Uh, it's also got Tony Stark. Like, it's a, an actual, like, really good representation of Tony Stark. So, um, so yeah, that's a, it's just freaking awesome. But if that wasn't enough, I, I saw this and this is just kind of like, this is Optimus Prime Starscream edition. So it comes with these like Starscream wings and his cannons that you can kind of attach on the back. But there's, I mean, it's totally, you can ar totally articulate him. Like you can articulate the fingers and then also, of course, um, you can open up his chest and uh, turn on his little matrix of leadership and his eyes. So this has been so just straight out of the bat. These are <laughs> these are kind of like collectors figures, I guess. Peep, you know, the um, there are collectors out there who honestly go crazy to collect these figures. And um, I'm not collecting them. I'm going to be using these. So again, this all kind of came to be um, when I saw Matthew's work. And again, you can see the link on it's Instagram.com slash galactic underscore warfighters. And if you want to see what the potential is here. Um, but, you know, I've, I've been shooting a lot lately, mostly the same things like, you know, landscapes and waterfalls and streams and stuff, because that's what my, uh, where I live, that's what uh, has to offer to me. And it's wonderful, don't get me wrong. 
but I was just, I don't know, can you relate? Like, let me know if you can relate. Like, I was just kind of feeling burnt out. And we're also approaching the summer season. Uh, and what happens is, and it's already starting to happen, the uh, water, the runoff from the mountains will start to dry out. You know, we're not getting as much rain and it's getting warmer and warmer. So when I went on uh, late last week to one of, I think to Gorton Creek, I could, I could tell that water levels were lowering. Um, so the alternative is to go to the coast and photograph, which is fine. But this project with these toys, I mean, I don't know, I, I, I'm so obsessed. And so I'm gonna be ex experimenting with positioning uh, these figures in various situations. And what I'm also most excited about is that it's going to require me to teach myself how to get much better at compositing. Uh, so, you know, I, I'm not going to take photos of them on the desk here. I'm going to go outside and kind of put them, uh, you know, on the ground in the dirt. And then also simulate, I'm going to have to composite and simulate in a, a scene somewhere. Also, and finally, like, you know, for those of you that are aware, um, you know, the figures here are pretty much the same height. So Optimus Prime and Iron Man are the same height, but Optimus Prime is pretty tall. Iron Man's human size. So, you know, I'm geeking out here, but it's going to require me to uh, work with perspective and scaling. So I'm going to have to shrink him down so that he's not the same height. And that's going to be something, uh, that's going to be something of a, of a challenge. And I just see my buddy Dave Daniels, AKA Mr. Captain America, he says, a couple of years ago, I did a whole bunch uh, with my Captain America figures. They turned out really cool, for me anyway. Yeah, and if you watch uh, Geek's Life or Geek's University, um, their daily shows, you'll see in the background uh, a bunch of their figures. Actually, coincidentally, uh, David has uh, an original G1 Optimus Prime figure, the one that I, you know, like I grew up on. And also, he's got Captain America figures as well, because he's obsessed with Cap, Team Cap. So yeah, um, that's that's something that I I mean I'm excited because these toys are so cool. I mean, it's like if I had these growing up, I don't know I'd be spoiled for you know toys for the rest of my life. These are not cheap toys either. It's a bit crazy, but you know if you're really looking to do a lot with this, which like I am. Um, you know, that's kind of the route you go. And I want to give props to Glenn Dewis because I watched one of his YouTube videos where he simulates how to, with one of these actual hot, uh, Iron Man hot toys, how to uh, simulate kind of dents in the armor uh, using actual dents from cars and just kind of blending them in using the blending modes in Photoshop. So I don't know, I don't have a timetable. This is going to be pr a pretty long work in progress because I have to teach myself how it, you know, it'll work best. But um, I, every time I share something, I will always attribute, um, oh, wrong side, this side, right there. Uh, this inspiration to Matt Callahan, Callahan for just doing what he does because it seriously triggered something um, that I don't remember having. Maybe not since I moved to Portland and I saw waterfalls for the first time. So uh, Matt, if you're out there, uh, thank you for that. And uh, again, I just wanna, for those of you watching, even if after the broadcast, be sure to leave comments because the very cool thing about these live broadcasts is that they live on in archives and we still have conversations from episodes like four. I just had a conversation in episode five. So, um, all right. Obsessed is a strong word. I don't know about that. Dave's saying obsessed is a strong word with Captain America. <laughs> I don't know, man. I bet Larry might, might agree with me just a little bit on that one. And it's not a bad thing. Like, I'm obsessed with Transformers, so. All right, so what I wanted to talk about today was, um, actually, let me bring out this lower third too. Uh, security, so actually, let me do this. Uh, this all came to be because of an email I got last week. So LinkedIn, the kind of, uh, I guess, social network for professionals, meaning like people who are professional workers um, sent me an email saying, oh, uh, you know, we got hacked and we made people aware of this when this happened years ago, but it turns out that they, they reported a much lower, a significantly lower number of records that were hacked. And I, I, from what I understand, 
um, someone was trying to extort them and was going to release a much, much larger trove of account information. So this email came in. I didn't care. When I get these kinds of emails, I don't really worry about it so much. I mean, of course I go in and I change my password, but the reason why I don't care is because I religiously subscribe to um, two-factor authentication so, or enhanced authentication or enhanced security. So what is two-factor authentication? Well, it's a very basic principle. It's um, your security to your account is a combination of something you know, meaning your password, and something you have, meaning a, oops, a smartphone or a tablet. So um, I did a lot of research and for a long time, uh, I used an app from Google called Authenticator. And it's free and it's both iOS and uh, Android. And what, it'll, what basically what it does is, um, after you enter your password in successfully, then a second factor or a second level of authentication comes in. And that's usually in the form of a PIN. Now, why am I bringing this up other than the email? Because um, I don't think anyone can deny that virtually everything that's important to us today, almost everything, meaning things like our photos, our communications, uh, our private records, are digitized. They're in one way or another, they're probably digital. And to another degree, they're also probably, or more likely, stored in some cloud-based solution like Dropbox or Dr Google Drive or any other, Amazon. So what I, what I was wondering when I got this email is like, okay, cool, like I'm secure, but what about, um, what about everyone else? You know, are, how secure are you? Have you ever done a security audit? So I'd like to share with you how I secure my accounts. So the first thing that I do is um, all of my passwords, everything is stored in an app called 1Password. Um, and it's brilliant. It's um, the database is stored on Dropbox, meaning the, the database that contains all of the encrypted information. And I use 1Password every time I need to generate a password. So let's say I create a new account um, let's say a new Google account. I tell 1Password to create a password that's 14 characters with a mix of alphanumerics, capital, is, capital and lowercase, and symbols. And it creates this totally random string of characters. And it records it. And in order for me to access 1Password, I have to, I'm the only one that will know that, I guess, vault password. And it's complex. I mean, it's complex for me. But I only have to remember 1Password. I guess that's the name of it. Uh, there's another solution called LastPass, which is um, Mac and PC as well. Um, but the cool thing is, is that you know, there one password is on iOS and Android. It supports fingerprint authentication on both platforms. So um, instead of me having to enter in my password, I can just use my fingerprint, which is a biometric uh, security, which is one of the most secure ways that you can lock something is through your fingerprint. All right, so that's just kind of passwords. Now let's go back to two-factor authentication, which if you remember is a combination of something you have, again, or something you know, the password. And that's what I use 1Password for, is to generate a very strong password. But even that's not enough, at least for me. So um, I used Google Authenticator. And the problem with that is that you can only, as far as I can tell, have it on one instance, meaning I can only have the app installed on my iPhone. Um, and if I try to install it on another device, like an iPad or an Android device, then that would cause a problem in the syncing of the uh, secure key that's established. So um, what I found was this really cool free app called Authy. So the reason why I like Authy, and it's just Authy.com, is because um, I can have all of my access to my uh, basically my uh, two-factor authentication pin, which looks like this. And uh, let me actually get rid of the, there. Um, so every 20 seconds, a six-digit pin is refreshed. And the coolest thing is, is that I can use Authy uh, to kind of sync these accounts. So I have Authy installed on my iPhone. I have Authy installed on my iPad and on my uh, Android device. And that's great because um, 
if I, for whatever reason, I'm on my iPad and I need to log into an app and my phone is somewhere else, which actually happens, like it's downstairs, I don't have to run downstairs and get it. So um, I can just launch Authy on my iPad and get the two-factor pin. And it's, it's great. Um, now, if you're wondering, like, um, you can see, look at the screenshot here. So I've got, look at all these different places where I've got two-factor authentication installed. I mean, I'm obsessed with this. I have it on both of my Gmail accounts. I have it on WordPress. So there's an, actually a, a pretty cool um, WordPress plugin called Mini Orange. I believe that's what it's called. And it essentially adds a two-factor authentication layer onto um, your WordPress login. And you can, for me, I just have it set to administrators. So I'm the only admin on my account. But I can force users who create accounts on my site or um, editors to have two-factor authentication. Facebook, I don't know if you knew this, but Facebook actually has two-factor authentication. Um, uh, Evernote, MailChimp. Uh, 500px. So basically, I, t I took a quick list also. Here are all of the services that I use currently, Twitter, Instagram. And in some cases, like Instagram and Twitter, you don't necessarily have a six-digit code. Instead, the what you have is literally your phone. So whereas with Authy, I can use the six-digit code that uh, is a, will appear on my iPad or my iPhone. Um, with Twitter or Instagram, when I log in, the first thing that will happen after I successfully enter my username and password is it will kick off an SMS message to my phone with a six digit pin. So um, as long as I have my phone with me, uh, I can log in. And so if someone catches my password, that's great because the next thing that will happen after that is cool, you entered the password. What's your two factor authentication pin? And unless that person has my phone and has access to the stuff, they can't continue on to the authentication process. And so you're wondering, or you may be asking, what happens if I lose my phone or I wipe my phone? Well, that, that's one of the benefits of um, Authy is that because you're kind of abdicating uh, the syncing from just the phone to Authy's servers, um, you just have to uh, authenticate back into Authy, like get a new phone or rebuild your phone or your iPad, install the app, and then log in and then all of this information that I just showed you here appears and it's in sync. So the, the, um, these digits don't, aren't random. They're actually synced to a specific time code. So you can't just uh, install it and just get a new code. Otherwise um, it's out of sync for, to really kind of render things down to a, a layman's terms. So with Authy, it may, Authy makes sure and, and maintains that time sync so that the code that's served up is always um, the current code. Because if it's out of sync, then it, the uh, authentication process will fail. So just to kind of uh, show you again, uh, this is kind of, well, these are all the services that I use. And I actually just found this morning that 500px supports it as well. So I, I really strong, strongly recommend this. now. We were going back to um, what happens if you lose your phone. Well, when you create or you enable two-factor authentication, one of the steps in that process is you will be served up what are called recovery codes. And these are codes that in the event that you simply can't get access, you don't have internet access, you lost your phone, as long as you have access to your recovery codes, and usually um, uh, you'll be provided with at least one recovery code and sometimes eight, up to eight, sometimes up to 10. Um, you can use any one of those uh, as a surrogate. So instead of the, um, the, one, the two factor authentication code, and that'll allow you to go through. Um, so I keep these in Evernote and they're all secured. Um, and that way I always have just almost like a third factor authentication in the event that I lose my phone. So in case you can't tell, I'm pretty obsessed about this. Um, I, I take security of my accounts very seriously because I actually have like everything, everything I have, everything digitized and I have it in the, essentially kind of like my credit card. Like I, I have a, a Delta uh, Sky Miles American Express card. And the reason why I have that is because I fly Delta a lot and I want my credit card to work for me. So in that same kind of analogy, I want my uh, drive storage, my cloud storage, and my technology to work for me. 
So by having all this information accessible to me at any given time, um, I want to make sure that that's secure. And so with even things like Drive and Dropbox, those are two apps for both iOS and Android, but I think it's only on iOS that it supports um, fingerprint, like a uh, touch ID to get into the app. So if any of these apps support that, you know, that's something you'll want to turn on too. Now, while Android may not support those uh, apps, you can download apps. And this is so cool. And I don't understand why Apple hasn't done this yet. But in the Google Play Store, there have been uh, third party developers who have built apps that essentially let you choose with any of the apps you have installed, whether they should sit behind a, uh, a fingerprint authentication or a pin. So let's say you give your phone to a friend and you want to make sure that that person doesn't snoop in your photos app or your email app. You can have those set to fingerprint authentication, which is brilliant. I don't know why I wish Apple just had a list of all the apps and then with touch ID and just turn it on or off. Like, I hope that with next month's uh, developer conference that they do something like that for iOS 10. I, I don't think they will though, um, but it would be really cool. So um, that's kind of what I had, uh, just kind of wanted to see how many people were, were kind of taking care of their security. Don't take it, I'm not trying to be an alarmist, um, but I do think that it's worth kind of auditing. Um, you know, make sure that, again, the, the service that I use here is Authy. Um, I think it's great. And so it's just one of those things, it's an extra layer of security. Uh, as we go more and more into putting everything in the cloud, I, I, th I don't think it's a, a, a stupid thing to look into. So with that, what I'd like to ask you uh, is, if you're enjoying the show, go ahead and tap on the little live subscribe, uh, live notifications button. And if you do, you'll see that it'll turn blue, which means that whenever the show goes live, you'll get a little notification on your phone and uh, you can just join in live, which I personally think is the most fun way to engage with a live program, especially because you can. And so uh, with that, I'd like to also let you know that you can follow me on all these social channels. I'm on Facebook and Instagram, Snapchat, Twitter, and YouTube forward slash Brian Matias on all of them. I'm actually very happy that I've been able to get my name on every platform and I definitely attribute it to having an uncommon surname. So uh, I wanna thank you all for joining me. I hope you have a great uh, Monday and a great rest of the week and I'll see you for episode 12 of the photo show. Bye everyone.